it isn't entirely known how this is transmitted and it is thought that it probably has a poultry connection but there are at least four cases in a family cluster where it's thought that the transmission of it was human to human and that is a terrifically significant because uh, influenza doesn't become an epidemic or globally, i.e. pandemic, until there's sustained human-to-human -human transfer. There's not evidence of human-to-human -human transfer in a sustained manner right now. Out of 108 cases to date, uh, there are 22 deaths. So if you just rounded it and said that's a 20% fatality rate, that's very high for an influenza virus. from the deaths that have occurred so far that it is the same pattern that we've seen in other influenza outbreaks, i.e. older patients and younger patients, people with other kind of concomitant uh, disease processes or immune deficiencies of various kinds. The CDC has started to grow the virus in eggs to uh, figure out how the best way is to um, turn it into a vaccine. It is important to note that the vaccines that have been used for influenza over these last few years do not seem to have any impact at all on the H7N9 in terms of preventing it. The, we do know that the early uh, indication from the uh, virus testing is that it's not very immunogenic, i.e. it doesn't seem to stimulate a big immune response and that will have certain implications for the development of the vaccine. It's mostly acting like influenza of the other kind that we're more familiar with. We know that some people have gotten it, have never sought medical care for it, and have gotten over it. We know that people can have mild to moderate illness with it, receive a little bit of care, and, and uh, do fine. So it has uh, the gamut that it runs in terms of its severity, but with a 20% give or take fatality rate, such as we know it today, uh, that would be higher than what you would expect. For the healthcare community, if they have somebody that comes in at this time of year with an influenza, particularly if it involves travel, it would be recommended to go to the CDC uh, website, look at the guidelines, and to initiate the antiviral treatment as per the recommendations of the CDC. It would be more likely, as in the past, to go to Southeast Asia, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, but in this day and age of global uh, transportation, um, anything's possible.